but it's a bit more than a hop. From Taiwan, it's 5,000 miles to Hawaii, the most remote island chain in the world. Isolated out in the middle of the Pacific, these volcanic islands are my final stop on my journey around the Tropic of Cancer. Hawaii is the only American state that's inside the tropics. It's a tourist mecca, one of the most gorgeous places I've been to on this trip, and a real tropical paradise. So we're just leaving the airport, and I've met up with Sam here. Sam gone. Doctor, I think, <laughs> Sam gone. Sam's a conservationist, and he was taking me to see some of Hawaii's beautiful and unique wildlife. Where are we going now? Um, we're headed to the Keoho Bird Conservation Center. I thought I'd be peering through binoculars at distant birds. But in this sanctuary, the birds have to be kept close and under protection. They're some of the rarest creatures on the planet. Richard Switzer is a Brit leading a team of conservationists and biologists trying to protect rare species and persuade them to breed. Ah, these are Nene. These were once the world's most endangered duck or goose. These are in fact wild birds who perhaps were raised as godlings here initially. And they're now flying wild, but they do come back here to breed. Oh, wow, so a real success, success story then. Yeah. But the successes are few in number. Hawaii's bird population is crashing. Some of them exist now just as pictures in the center's mural, and the rest are under threat. So this one is extinct. This one extinct in my lifetime. Extinct on the top there? Yeah. Still with us. This one extinct just recently. Is that the actual reality, that about half of the Hawaiian birds are, are extinct now? Extinct. And all the ones that remain are, are rare or endangered. And it's not just birds. Hawaii has become the extinction capital of the world. In Hawaii, because of the small size, we've been able to catalogue all of the plants, all of the birds, many of the invertebrates, and so we can see when they're missing or when they're declining and then when they finally disappear. The situation is now so serious, the only option for conservationists is to capture the few surviving birds in the wild and protect them here in the sanctuary. So these are called Hawaiian crows, what's special about these creatures? Firstly, this species is extinct in the wild. So, um, the last birds were seen in 2002. They're, they're extinct in, yeah. in the wild. And so you've got, how many have you got here? Here we've got 52. Uh, as a program, we've got 67. And that's it. That's the entire global population. Um, and that makes them pretty much the, the most critically endangered bird in human care probably anywhere on the planet, so. That is absolutely extraordinary. And what a responsibility as well, though. You're the sort of steward for a, for a species. Well, if a chick is hatching, then we'll stay up overnight and make sure it hatches okay, because if it needs assistance, we've got to be there. Um, is that what it's come to, Rich? I mean, really protecting these creatures or endangered, endangered creatures one by one, egg by egg? Absolutely, yeah. Every egg is sacred, precious. You know what this place is? This place is an ark. This is really our last chance of saving some of these incredibly rare tropical species. And what's really sad is that this place and other places like it throughout the tropics are the future of conservation. Isn't it sad that it's come to that? So this is a real treat at the end of our journey, a chance to get up in the air and get a bird's eye view of the islands. The trip was nearly over, and the chopper offered me a final glimpse of tropical paradise. But this is a paradise in which dozens of species have vanished within my lifetime. The culprits include climate change, pollution, and newly introduced species, which native animals and plants can't compete with. The main problem here, of course, is us. We're directly responsible for almost all of the environmental catastrophes I've seen during my journeys around the tropics. But surely Hawaiians should be able to manage and protect their environment. After all, this is part of the richest nation on Earth, 
and these are young islands where new land is forming in front of my eyes. And now we can see the lava flowing straight into the sea, straight into the water. It's the most extraordinary sight. Hot lava hitting cold water, it turns immediately to steam. And the plumes are rising up into the sky. It's an absolutely breathtaking sight. I travelled with Sam to the remote Camillo Beach on the southern shore of Hawaii's Big Island. Bloody hell blown sideways though. Anyway, we're here. It's just dropped us off. At Camillo Beach. In what feels a bit like the middle of nowhere. This beach is a long way from the nearest town. And from here, the vast ocean stretches away thousands of miles before you hit wow, land. Just look at this. What the hell? Yet it's becoming a candidate for the dirtiest beach in the world. Yeah, something's been this. cut this from. Is some sort of plastic container. It's been drifting and sun bleached. It's come from the sea. What looks like pristine sea. This is a look, it's a plastic helmet. An old a slipper. Shoe yeah. slipper. Plastic bottles. Very little of this comes from Hawaii. This plastic comes from all over the world. The fact that it's on this remote island brought home to me like never before just how polluted our planet really is. I mean, look at this. And this is after a cleanup. The first time that I came to this beach, the debris problem was so bad, you couldn't even see the rocks along most of this beach. It was covered in just tons of plastic. Plastic doesn't degrade, it just breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. On the surface, over 50% of, of what we're walking on is actually little bits of decomposing plastic. I mean, these are tiny, Sam. Pink, blue, green, orange. But there's white bits here that could be plastic, they might be sand. I mean, this plastic is becoming the beach. The beach is becoming plastic. And look, it's not just on the surface either. It'd be one thing if it were. But the deeper you go, the more plastic you get. It's the smallest issue, the smallest problem I think I've seen on my journey around the tropic. And yet it's the biggest one as well. The fact we're, we're soiling our nest. As fast as the beach is cleaned, it fills up again with a seemingly endless supply of rubbish. It really is devastating, not just because this crap is here on these beaches, but because of what this signifies and where this has come from. It's coming from the great Pacific Ocean. There's now this garbage dump floating around in the middle of the sea in the largest ocean on Earth and sending this kind of trash to every island in the Pacific. We're in the US, we're in the world's richest country. If this can't be stopped here, really, what, what chance is there for the rest of the you know, other countries in the tropics or other countries around the world for that matter? It was a troubling end to my journey. I traveled for more than six months through an extraordinary region of the world. I'd visited 18 countries seen amazing wildlife ah! and met some wonderful people. But more than anything, the journey had made me realize we're running out of time to protect life on this beautiful planet. So this is it, my final walk, the end of the journey. Come all the way around the planet. Mexico's in that direction. That's where I started the journey many, many months ago. Well, I've seen so much during my travels through the tropics. So much poverty, so much suffering, but also so much beauty as well. So much to cherish, so much to protect. It really is the most incredible region of the world. I'm in love with the tropics and I can only hope one day I'll return.